Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick little video here comparing Nokia 6 with the Samsung Galaxy CJ7 Pro and the Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra. Uh, three handsets, very similar in terms of the price, so I'm just trying to uh, see you know, which is giving you the best bang for book here. Uh, you can get the J7 Pro for about 250 euro, uh, Nokia 6 about 200, and the XA1 Ultra 300, so a little bit mixed in terms of the price. Uh, they also have some different specifications that you might want to be aware of. Uh, so we'll just start them up here at the same time, and then we can see who is getting the best performance. Oh, it's going to be close. So J7 Pro, nice and fast here, followed by Nokia 6, not too far behind, and Sony's always behind when it comes to the speed, coming in at last unfortunately, uh, but it wasn't too slow actually, and you do get a slightly bigger uh, display on the XA1 Ultra, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't look quite as good as what you're getting with the J7 Pro in terms of the OLED uh, technology here, which I will just bump down in terms of the brightness because it's very, you know, uh, bright here. Uh, the Nokia screen is quite decent, but it could have been better, I think. Hopefully, they'll make OLED for the Nokia 8, uh, which I think has just been announced. Uh, so we can just have a look here how they do compare in terms of the speed. We're going to run a standard uh, benchmarking here and have a look at the performance. We can also see the summary of uh, what we're getting. So let's just get it up here. Where is it? This one. So we're getting HMD Global, not Nokia here. Because current generation Nokia's are pretty much rebadges, obviously, you bear that in mind. Uh, but you know, it is Nokia, I guess. And you're getting uh, Android 7.1.1 on the Nokia, which is good. Nokia is also giving you a entry level Snapdragon 430 uh, compared to the the uh, better processor in the J7 Pro, which is a proper Samsung processor, and Sony just cheaping out completely uh, with the MediaTek. So you can see we do have this OLED technology here. Uh, I think in terms of the camera, probably Sony is giving you the best bang for buck. It's got the same sensor as the uh, Z5 series, apparently. Although I found it to be a little bit temperamental at the time, I don't think it's as well optimised as before. Uh, so do bear uh, that in mind. You can see here in terms of this benchmark, it's, uh, it looks quite close actually. Uh, I think Sony's going ahead though. So just not to drag on the video for too long, I'm going to pause it and then get to the end so we can see. So I think we are coming to the end here and quite surprisingly the Sony seems to be uh, ahead here pretty much. Maybe the process are not so bad after all. Uh, Nokia seems to have fallen behind and Samsung is the middle runner here. Uh, so with the Sony you're getting quite a decent multi-core but still can't reach a thousand for the single core uh, which is I think the general weakness when it comes to your uh, MediaTek kind of solution here. Well, it is good that it has finished first overall uh, you are getting 3 gigs of RAM, or is it 4 gigs? It looks like 4 gigs actually here, yeah. which is quite nice. Ooh. So maybe it's not so bad after all. Um, and we do have the J7 Pro, which is finishing up now. I'm not sure what the difference is between the J7 Pro and the J7 Normal. Uh, but you can see, wow, the scores are nearly identical. Uh, but the Sony does just beat it, uh, I think. No, it doesn't for the multi-core. So the actual multi-core is better here on the uh, Exynos uh, processor, which comes at 1.59 speed. And finally, we do have Nokia limping behind here a little bit. 
when it comes to sim core and the multi core. You can see the latest software can't really save it, unfortunately. Uh, so quite interesting results here. You can see Sony is actually uh, giving you probably the most bang for buck when it comes to the uh, raw benchmark. Obviously, there is more to uh, using the phones in terms of the speed. And I got to say, I think the Samsung does feel probably the well, the most well optimized out of all of them. Uh, the Nokia feels good because it's got like a stock build about it. So using the phone is pretty nice. Even the Sony actually does actually feel quite uh, good. But I've noticed with the MediaTek processor, when you start really multitasking, that's when you'll start to grind, grind to a halt. Uh, so I think you should move away from them overall in the future. Uh, in terms of the build quality, you can just have a look at them. You get that wide angle uh, lens action here. Uh, we can just have a look here. You can see this kind of nice kind of metallic design. Uh, it's very uh, durable feeling actually. I wish they would have made like uh, the fingerprint sensor on the back, maybe in the middle, because uh, it feels a bit weird on the front, but uh, nevertheless it does feel quite durable. Uh, I wouldn't trust it near water though, as you know, because it's a bit uh, you know, disappointing they didn't add waterproofing for the J5. Uh, I think the Nokia feels the best overall in terms of the premium here, and if the Nokia 8 feels like this, then you know it's a solid buy at the end of the day. Hopefully they will have implemented uh, Type C as well at the bottom because that is a necessity, I think, for Android uh, phones going forward, and probably also limit the bezel on the top and the bottom. Sony's got the best bezel kind of design here, and you definitely need to use this for their new phone going forward. Uh, it's just amazing how much screen real estate you can get in here. They could improve it a little bit more, you know, go with like what the essential phones are coming with, like uh, Cyclops area here for more screen, but a uh, very impressive uh, display uh, kind of ratio here uh, with the Sony. The back is a little bit bland, you know, would like to see probably frosted glass here, but uh, very nice uh, front overall. Uh, so, yeah, just a quick speed comparison here between uh, these three phones. If you've got any questions, do let me know. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, find it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.